Hey, 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 welcome to another Valley Forged. Talking lasers again. If you love lasers and just learning everything about lasers and starting a laser business, etc., you're in the right place. Like, subscribe. Now, just in November, I did a video about the K40 versus diode lasers, but things have changed so much. Uh, I think I needed to do a 2023 edition especially now that I'm using the 20 watt lasers, we've got 35, we've got 40 watt diode lasers. So do you even need a K40 anymore? I mean, are they even useful now that we can get a 35 watt diode laser that works perfectly great? Uh, you know, I would be talking about the Acer 35 watt, nice small dot size, easy, fast, reasonably uh, cheap. So how is that going to stack up? Is, is the K40 uh, going to be a dinosaur now? And, uh, I, you know, the answer is yes and no. Um, there are just some things about a CO2 laser that you just can't get in a diode, probably not anytime soon, maybe ever. And uh, some things that are uniquely K40. That's why I didn't uh, do this just... CO2 versus diode laser, which I've done videos on that before. But this is a very different animal when you're talking about the K40 in particular, because now we're talking about uh, a $550 CO2 laser. Your next step up in a CO2 laser is like over $2,000. And so then you're kind of out of even the diode range, right? Maybe 60 watt. CO2 laser with a nice big bed and everything. Now we're a completely different animal. But for $550, basically, the reason why I'm this is a Monport because it has light burn compatibility. And I'm not even going to talk about any K40s that don't. Um, for me, that's the that's the selling point. When uh Monport reached out to me and was like, Hey, you want to try a K40? I had never wanted to get a K40 because they weren't light burn compatible. I was going to have to change out the motherboard. It just, no, wasn't going to happen. But this one happens to be light burn ready. And it was, and that made all the difference to me because I make keychains out of acrylic and guess what can't do that. You know, I like to use the neon pink and, you know, yellow and different colors to make acrylic keychains, and I make acrylic earrings sometimes and whatnot. And right away, I can tell you, I make way more money than $550 a year on keychains that are made from acrylic. So I can't do that on a diode laser. So already, there's one huge reason, at least for me, to have the K40, because I'm in an apartment. I can't have this big CO2 laser. It's way more expensive. I got to get it in. And then how am I going to get it out of here? You know, those things are not light. And not only do you have to have the laser itself, you've got to have the water and the blah, 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 blah. And, you know, it's uh, the venting and everything else. Very difficult uh, with a bigger laser. So the K40 works perfectly. I can make thousands of keychains a year. And, uh, five bucks a piece or whatever, you, you know, it's a consistent way to make a lot of money with acrylic. You cannot do this with a diode. And I, I'm going to say that's probably your biggest difference. You know, uh, you know, I will say the K40, 40 watt CO2 laser is cheaper per watt than the diode is currently. Now I'm going to say that it's 30 watts. You know, it says it's 40, but your working is around 30. You can only do about 70% if you want to, you know, keep your tube for a long time, let's get, compare it to a 30, a 30 watt diode. There doesn't seem to be any. So we're going to say the 35 watt diode or even the 20 watt, uh, you know, the cheapest 20 watt diode laser you're going to get out there right now is let's say $800. This is, uh, actually, you know, I have a link down in the description for this one as well. And for the K40, by the way. Uh, so the K40 I will have a link for this one, and I also have a link for the cheapest 20-watt 
uh, diode laser. So between the two of those, you, you know, you can't go wrong with either one, but $550, you know, and you're going to have to get a few extra things. But look, you've already got an enclosure. It's done. You stick it in a bucket of water and kind of you're off to the races. With the diode, you're going to need a separate enclosure for it. And so, you know, you could add that to the cost. So what I'm saying is, is that you're nowhere near the price of the K40 here. It's just way cheaper. But, okay, what are the negatives? Well, actually, one more positive I want to say is there's so many people, thousands and thousands of people have been buying K40s for many, many years. This is a thing. In fact, you can look right here, K40 Laser Machine Group, 20,000 members. You know, these are the ones that I've been, you know, members of for a long time. So there's way more. It's just like unlimited amount of forums and ways to learn how to do better with your K40 laser and to tips and tricks. But one thing you're really not going to do without a great bit of effort is increase the bed size. So that's the first thing that I got to tell you. If you're looking between a 40 watt K K40 and a diode laser bed size. It is difficult. I got mine to be like around 12 by 12, but that's about all you're going to get easily. That's great for doing keychains, coasters, you know, earrings, things like that, but it is limited and it's very difficult to make it bigger. That's the thing about CO2 lasers. That's really what you're paying for in the bottom line is the bed size because the actual laser tube, you can you can actually put a 150 watt laser tube in this mod port if you just make it the area for the laser tube big enough. There and that's true, say you get a $2,500 CO2 laser 60 watt. You can upgrade that to 150 watts. The tube will just come way out of the back, but it's totally possible. What's not possible really is increasing the bed size. So I'm going to hammer that over and over and over. If you need a bed size that's bigger than 8 by 12, which is what this is, or even just you know, a little bigger than that, you can make it uh, maybe 12 by 12 with a little bit of work. Uh, this isn't going to work for you. With a diode laser, you've usually got a 400 by 400. And then also, so it's like 17 inches by 17 inches. And then you can get extensions for a lot of them. And so you can be looking at like, you know, 35 inches by 17 inches, you can make really big things. Not only that, you could take it and set it on top of whatever you're making. And so you can really get some pretty big things, which I have done. And so one thing that you've got a benefit with a diode laser is just pure bed size. Also, everything is contained in this one little module. And unlike that, you, you know, with a K40, you've got mirrors all over the place that can come undone. You've got to get new laser tubes. You've got to deal with laser tubes and water. So it does have some advantages. And these 20-watt diode lasers are super powerful. I mean, I, I am in love with this 20-watt laser. Uh, can you cut out a little bit better with a CO2 laser, a 40-watt, than your 20-watt? Yes. but Literally, you're paying, this is the cheapest one, but most of the 20-watt diode lasers are twice the price of this K40. So you really got to look at that. You just put it down on paper and say, okay, here's all the things I'm going to need. Because you're going to need a bigger uh, honeycomb vet bed for your diode laser than you are for this the K40. So you're going to have to spend more money on the honeycomb bed. And so you just price out all the different components and what you're going to want and what it's going to actually take to get that into your house and to make it work for you and put it together and say, oh, OK, you know, hey, this is what I'm willing to do. This is what my needs are. Because from the bottom of my heart, I could say you can't really go wrong with either way you go. 
They're both exciting. They're both things that you can build with. You can get make better. You can improve. You can have fun with. You can make so much stuff. It just all depends on, you know, as is everything in life, what's your budget and what do you need to make? And I have videos on pretty much everything that you can, uh, that's regarding these topics that you can go into and say, okay. And if I don't, let me know, I'll make one. But all of the lasers, maybe from the 5.5 watt diode lasers you can get now for $200, all the way up to the 40 watt X tool and the, you know, the K40, they all have their place and reason. Are you starting a business? You know, what are you making for that business? How many do you need to make a week? Uh, is it part-time, full-time? Are you just having fun? Do you just want to learn? I mean, if you learn how to use a K40, it's the same for all of the machines that you're going to buy for a big business. You know, you get a $20,000 a boss or thunder laser or something like that. It's going to work just like this K40 pretty much. <laughs> Actually, it'll be a little bit easier to deal with. There are some things in the K40 that just, you know, it's got a little space in there to work with. And uh, the parts are going to be less expensive. That's why it's $550. So there are some challenges that are going to come with putting this together. Uh, sometimes, sometimes they work perfectly right out of the box, but you have a lot of people out there to help you. And there, you know, there's an infinite amount of resources, like I said. Now this, this bed is not light, right? So that's a little bit different than maybe say with a diode laser to this enclosure. This is pretty much the enclosure that all the K40s come in. And it is, it, this thing, you can do some damage. <laughs> In fact, I hurt my back the first time lifting this out of the box. So be careful. These enclosures are beefy, but they've gone through the test of time. You know, this is this is not something that you're going to be trying for the first time. Hundreds of thousands of people have done this before. So yeah, of course, the question is difficult to answer, just like it was last year. But the competition is definitely better. I mean, the 20 watt diode lasers are really amazing and they're only going to get better. And there is a lot to love about them. But when it comes to doing certain things, I have to go right back to the CO2. I have to go right back to my mon port and uh, start using that again because I just can't do it with the diode. So. There you have it, but I, you know, I'm happy to answer any other questions. Probably look through my videos and see if anything fits your topic, but uh, I'm more than happy to answer any questions about either of them uh, because I can't say everything, but I hope I gave you at least some basics on why you would get either one, and uh, I will see you in the next one. All right, love y'all. Well, I know the light's not beautiful in here, uh, but I mean, <laughs> I know the light's not very good in here, so you may have trouble seeing everything, but it's really clean. Everything is clean. I love to have it, that it has a drag chain and a laser and, and extra components that, uh, you know, that, yeah. <laughs> And this motherboard, I've seen it before, you know, in other people's videos, but that controller, this is, this is really cool. All blue. Everything looks really nice. I'm, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. Now, will it fire up on the first go? That is kind of the most important, but we've got a long ways to go before I get to that. So one thing at a time.